It's my nerd world. Welcome to it, a Depeche Mode podcast. On the show this week, I'll give a bit of an update on the show because I haven't been uh, recording shows as frequently as I wished, but things are a little crazy right now in case you hadn't noticed. We do have some news to talk about. Martin Gore did release another track from his solo EP. I'll share my thoughts about that track, Howler. Uh, We do have some listener feedback I've been holding on to. And if you're a science fiction reader and obviously a Depeche Mode fan, I have some interesting news for you that I hope that you'll enjoy. So welcome to the show this week. I'm glad you're here. Let's get right to it. my nerd world a Depeche Mode podcast and I am your host John Justice I'm glad you're with the show my apologies up front for not recording as frequently uh, as I would like Uh, I wear a lot of different hats on top of my full-time job as being a uh, a talk show host Uh, I also do a Star Wars podcast on occasion I do a space opera podcast uh, and I also write novels in whatever little free time that I have left and I have a I have some interesting news for you for those that haven't heard uh, especially if you're a science fiction a science fiction reader so I'll share that with you at the end of the show uh, it does relate to Depeche Mode I hope you'll get a kick out of it and uh, and check out this new book that comes out uh, that comes out this week so uh, first off an update on the show itself uh, you know I really wish that I had uh, the the time to do a weekly show and when the band gets back into the studio to record a new album, and certainly uh, when we get new Depeche Mode material, I will be uh, recording the show with uh, a lot more frequency. Hopefully, if we get out of this pandemic and the band goes on tour again, that'll be another opportunity uh, to to record more, uh, more shows. But because there's just not a lot of Depeche Mode news to cover, and I've gone through... Um, most of the albums in previous podcasts. I do have ideas for other shows, including reviews on live releases and concerts and things like that. But again, because of my busy schedule, uh, there just hasn't been the opportunity to uh, to pump out as many shows as I would like. So my apologies up front, but I am so thankful for those that uh, that do enjoy the show and download it whenever they do uh, they do occur. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some news that we do have. I want to get into some listener feedback, and then I'll talk um, a bit about my my latest Embark uh, Science Fiction Space Opera Series book, which, again, uh, being a Depeche Mode fan and you're listening to this show, I think you're going to really enjoy what I have to, uh, to share with you. Uh, I was actually surprised. I was not expecting this. I've been so wrapped up like most people, in the the news of the day, because, you know, 2021 apparently uh, didn't uh, want 2020 to get all the attention in these, what, we're only like nine days into this new year, and I just, my head is still spinning. So, uh, much to my shock, I went to my iPhone a couple days ago, and I go into my playlists, and there's a brand new track from Martin Gore's uh, new instrumental EP, The Third Chimpanzee. Uh, The track is called Howler. And so it was, an. I mean, look, honestly, uh, I felt bad being a massive Depeche Mode fan and being out of the loop, not realizing that there was going to be another track released, released, um, waiting for the entire EP to obviously uh, come out. Uh, But it was a nice little surprise at 2.30 in the morning to open my phone and be able to hear some new music from uh, Depeche Mode's Uh, chief songwriter Martin Gore. The single is called Howler, and I'll share some details uh, with you from an article that I found from Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, If this is your first time listening to the show or you missed me mentioning this on previous shows, the reason I don't play Depeche Mode music or any licensed music on the show is for that very reason. Uh, Because I put this show out on multiple platforms, including YouTube, uh, the moment that I go and put any licensed music on the show, I get dinged with a, dinged with a cease and desist. Um, I have done that in the past, but it demonetizes everything. So I, I really wish that I could, you know, put out some of the some of this music so that we could talk about it. But unfortunately, I can't. So what I would encourage you to do is 
Put on Howler right now on a different platform, depending on where you're listening to this, if you have the ability to do so, while I talk about this, my thoughts about this this latest track from Martin Gore's solo EP. Uh, but here's the article here uh, from Rolling Stone magazine. Ahead of the release of his instrumental EP, The Third Chimpanzee, Depeche Mode's Martin Gore has revealed the new single, Howler. The eerie, cerebral track comes accompanied with a video depicting a psychedelic painting of a Howler monkey. Uh, this is the one actually done by a monkey. Um, since loom in and out, almost like the sound of primate. Gore said in a statement, Howler was the first track I recorded for the third Chimpanzee EP. I resynthesized some vocals that almost sounded human, but not quite. That's why I decided to name the track after a monkey. Uh, and that was the whole... Uh, he did an interview recently that was really fascinating where he talked a bit about why he ended up naming it the third chimpanzee based off the book, that he has taken his vocals and twisted them so you couldn't even tell they were vocals, but they sounded, you know, human, but not quite, and that he was inspired uh, by this book from the 80s, I believe, the third chimpanzee, and decided to sort of theme the entire EP around um, chimpanzees. And, and, and animals, and so all the tracks, Mandrel, Howler, all relate to that. Uh, he went on to say, that's why I decided to name the track after a monkey. I thought it would be a good theme to carry on with the rest of the tracks. Howler follows the lead single, Mandrel, the five-track EP out January 29th, marks uh, Martin Gore's first new solo since 2015's uh, MG. And I really enjoy MG. Uh, MG makes me kind of wish that Martin would go and write um, a soundtrack for a film. Um, I'll talk a bit about my books at the end of the show uh, and this latest book that is directly Depeche Mode related. Uh, but I've often fantasized about, man, it would be really cool to get Martin Gore if any of my stories turned into a feature-length film. I would really love to get a score done by Martin Gore. And that rings true, by the way. Uh, for Howler, and I want to mention something about the track specifically, the last line of the article from Rolling Stone says, uh, it's pressed on limited edition 12-inch blue vinyl as well as on CD. Both are available for pre-order, also for a digital release release as well. Um, look, I really like what Martin's putting out. It obviously isn't Depeche Mode. And, you know, I think for me as a fan, and I think for a lot of fans, you know, we... We, we get that. Dave puts out his solo work, whether he's working by himself or whether he's working with a group like Mirror or Soul Savers. And again, they're enjoyable because these are, you know, this is content creation and music done by individuals whom we love as a collective in this band we call Depeche Mode. But I know for me, there is also this understanding that, you know, it's not Depeche Mode. So there's always going to be something a little bit lacking. Martin Gore has very unique tastes, and I respect how much Martin creates music that he enjoys. It's very weird. It's not very catchy. Um, it's more the type of stuff for me that I would go and put on in the background or when I'm writing. I do find it very inspirational. Howler, uh, Howler is interesting because I don't particularly care for the first part of the track. It's not that I don't enjoy it, but it's just, you know, it is very sort of cerebral and it is very eerie and so it's you know it's more like going to you know watch a particular style style film if you're going to go watch a horror movie you know you you're going in, the, in in there to be scared um if i'm going to get something uplifting that i can bob my head to i'm not going to put on the third chimpanzee if i want something in the background that's going to sort of enhance the the situation that i'm in or my mood you know i'll listen to something like this except to say that the second half of the track is where, in my opinion, it really shines because there is a melodic part to the song that enters in during the second part of the track that I really, really love. And I've been toying with the idea because I've got decent editing skills just having done radio for as long as I, as I have, um, and I've remixed tracks before on my own. Um, I've been toying with the idea of grabbing Howler and throwing it into my uh, Adobe Audition editing software and chopping it up and making a lengthier track that has more of that melody over and over again. Because that does very much feel like Depeche Mode to me. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well. But that part of the song... Um, 
grabbed me. When I first listened to it, I was like, okay, we're getting more clicks and beeps and weird distortions. And this is Martin Gore at his, you know, as, as his, as he likes to do. But then when that instrumental part kicked in, I went, whoa, that I'm really digging that I really like. Um, and having both tracks now with Howler and then Mandrill, um, has me more excited for this EP than I was before because they really do complement each other and I'm and I'm, I'm I'm more curious now to hear the rest of this EP than I was than when I just heard that first track Mandrill. So really uh, interested again to hear your thoughts talkshownerd at gmail.com that is the email address where you can email me talkshownerd at gmail.com and I look forward to uh, hearing your thoughts on this second single from Martin Gore's um, third chimpanzee EP all right so first off I want to say thank you for listening to the show uh, and also thank you for if you do sit through it and listen through it thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about the content that I create um, I've taken a little bit of heat um, especially in some comments on iTunes, which is fine. I've been doing radio for 25 years. I'm used to getting criticism, especially in the world that we live in right now. Uh, but I've taken some heat from individuals who have said, oh, he just does the podcast to promote his books. And that's not true. Um, the truth is I, I, I write my science fiction space opera novels because I'm looking at my future and I'm looking at my retirement and, and I love creating content and I need to be able to separate myself out from the news of the day. And, the three things in life, apart from uh, my faith in God, my, my family, and my job that I love are Star Wars, NASCAR, and Depeche Mode. Um, and, you know, with that, they kind of intertwine in weird ways. Uh, so I've talked about my books quite a bit on the show before. If you're first time listening, um, I do have a science fiction series of four books. The, uh, the fourth book comes out on Tuesday, and that's what I want to talk about briefly. And it is very much Depeche Mode related. Um, the first book in Bark uh, came out uh, back in 2018, and the uh, the protagonist of that book, Taft Guardia, who's loosely based on me, is also a massive Depeche Mode fan, and that's why I've talked about it on the show before. I've included a lot of references, both um, uh, sort of subtle references and direct references to Depeche Mode in that first book and the subsequent uh, books. And I've talked about that on the show. And for those that have read them, thank you. I appreciate that. I hope you've enjoyed the references to Depeche Mode. Uh, the fourth book in my series uh, comes out this Tuesday. And it is a uh, it is a shorter book than the uh, than the first three, the opening trilogy, which is which is very much a trilogy in that there is some finality in that third book. This fourth book is a standalone um, adventure. It can be read as a standalone story um, or book four in the Embark series. Uh, and if you've never read any of the other stories, you can actually read book four as a bit of a primer for the other books. Okay, so why am I continuing to talk about this on a Depeche Mode podcast? It's because um, the book is called Gone Corbin, and the Asteroid of Misfortune. Seeing that you're a Depeche Mode fan, uh, no, that is no mistake that uh, I named the character after uh, Dave Gaughan and uh, Anton Corbin, you know, who's been the creative element of Depeche Mode for decades now. Um, what I haven't talked about before, um, and this character I introduced in book three, The Vanishing War. He is a former musician, uh, he flies his own ship called uh, the Zero Nine. Uh, Zero Nine is a reference back to the uh, late 80s, early 90s brand uh, Zero Nine, of which was tied directly into um, BMXing, which is what I did at a, at a younger age. Uh, so uh, I was inspired by a lot of different things relating to Depeche Mode when writing Gon Corbin and the Asteroid of Misfortune. And I wanted to share it with you on the show. The book is available in paperback right now. The ebook um, is available for pre order, and the release date is Tuesday. Um, so here is the uh, synopsis for the Gon Corbin story. And then I want to talk briefly about my favorite track from Spirit and how it influenced not only this book, but also the previous book. 
Uh, Gon Corbin, former musician turned uh, intergalactic messenger, used to tour the world in his beloved ship, the Zero Nine. That was before the great evacuation of Earth sent countless humans into deep space to find a new a new home. With nowhere left to rock, Gon traveled between the populated planets with his sarcastic AI companion, Alex, sending out communication drones for a price. During the Vanishing War, Gon and Alex on board the Zero Nine were struck by the, en uh, the enemy, sending them hurtling uncontrollably through space. Now, marooned on an asteroid, running low on fuel and oxygen, are the least of their problems. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com, search for John J.O.N. Justice, uh, and embark. You can find the book there, or you can go to MyNerdWorld.net, where you can find out about all things um, relating to the podcast and also the books that I write. Uh, so, I was inspired by Dave Gone and the meaning behind the song Cover Me, which is next to Poison Heart, my favorite track off of off of Spirit. I had the idea to do a spin-off story for Gon Corbin um, for a while when I started writing uh, The Vanishing War. My intention initially was to actually go and make this first story, Gon Corbin and the Asteroid of Misfortune, um, into a story based off of what Dave Gon had described the meaning of Cover Me to be. As I started to write, I realized that I wanted this story to be a little bit more lighthearted, and it's a bit of a comedy um, with a lot of uh, a lot of witty banter between Gon Corbin uh, and his sarcastic AI companion ALX B Alex. So what I did was I actually took Dave Gon's inspiration for Cover Me, and I used it as the basis for the driving motivation uh, in the protagonist for book five, which is also complete and I'm currently editing. Does that make sense? So, Gone Corbin's available this week. Um, book five is going to be available uh, sometime in February, beginning of March. So, for those that don't know, um, Dave Gone sat down and uh, did an interview um, back in 2017 where he actually talked about the meaning behind Cover Me. For those that don't know it, this is what it is. Gon co-wrote a song on the new record called Cover Me. He becomes very intense talking about the track, which is about a man who has the opportunity to go and find another planet. When he gets to his new planet, he finds it's exactly the same. He just failed to appreciate the beauty of the old one. It's about that dread of realizing it's not them, it's me, he says. It's about the beauty of communication, of wanting to be understood and loved. I've spent most of my life trying to get that, but sometimes when I get it, I do, I do not know what to do with it. When I feel that side of me that is yearning for connection, I try to get it, and then it goes away. He took the song to Gore, <laughs> who he says didn't understand the metaphor. And then Dave Gon says, I'm like, what the blank? You know, what the blank do you know? He cries. I never questioned your songs, Martin. I just sing them. Now, I thought it was interesting that, that Dave Gon actually went so far as to explain the meaning behind the songs because, or this particular song, because Martin Gore has always been so hesitant to go in and do that. Although it is very much in, in my opinion, Dave Gon's personality to go and be open about that. Because based off of everything that he's been through in his life, he always has been, um, at least again, in my opinion, a very open individual. So um, that is a long, convoluted way to sort of explain that Depeche Mode continues to influence me in my life and in the content that I create. And uh, I won't spoil anything for book five. But the at the core of book five and the driving motivation of the female protagonist in that book, because it jumps ahead in the timeline of the story for those that are familiar with it, um, that, that that driving motivation at its heart was taken from the root meaning of what Dave Gon was trying to say in that song. Uh, cover me and that's the song that i listen to when i go to bed every night uh true story so uh, listen i hope uh, if you are a science fiction reader 
or you know somebody who is, um, I hope you'll take the time uh, to go and uh, and check out the stories. Um, I put a lot of pop culture references uh, in these uh, in these books. I was really inspired by Ready Player One. Um, I'm 48 years old. Uh, grew up listening to a lot of uh, you know, uh, it's almost exclusively alternative music uh, in the 80s, 90s, and in, in 2000s. And um, I include a lot of references to that time period, especially at the peak. Um, of Depeche Mode, back at that trilogy of albums that I talk about so uh, so often when you go Music for the Masses, um, Violator, uh, and Songs of Faith and Devotion. And you can kind of shuffle those shuffle those around a bit when you want to squeak in Black Celebration there. But those core that core group of albums to me is sort of the pinnacle of uh, and, and the height of Depeche Mode's power. So I hope you go to Amazon or MyNerdWorld.net and check those books out. I really would appreciate it. All right, let's wrap up with a little listener feedback um, this week. And first, we hear from Stu242. Uh, and I've been holding on to these for a while, guys. So if you're like, man, dude, I emailed you like a year ago. <laughs> like, my apologies. But hey, I've been hanging on to your emails. Howdy. Uh, one thing that I would get a huge kick out of back in the day when I would go vinyl hunt Depeche Mode is to read the secret etchings once I got the 12-inch home. From what I can tell, I've only seen them on UK bong releases of their 12 inches. If you're not familiar with these, grab a random bong 12-inch and check out the area of the record after the song. I am aware of this, um, Stu, but I'm really glad you brought it up. Just for kicks, he wrote some of these down. So... For 12 bong one, leave in silence, um, there's an etching in there that says, uh, that one, Mr. Brand Baker, is all right. Uh, forget the balance right. Um, the etching is, it's what we in the biz call a combination mix. On bong three, uh, everything counts. Are you dreaming of me, mate? Bong four, love in itself. Uh, were you in the pub, John? Bong six, master and servant. Uh, you don't do that, do you? And again, these are all the etchings, right? In, in, uh, in, uh, on, the, uh, on, the actual, uh, on the actual vinyl. Um, and Bong 9, uh, honestly, I haven't lost me roots. And more, he writes. I would love to know what some of the references are. Surely inside jokes. That's all for now. Can't wait for the next podcast. Stu, I'm sorry it took so long. Um, you'll find other reason when you discover... Uh, pleasure, little treasure. Stu 242. Thank you so much, Stu. I really do appreciate it. Um, and then we hear from Rob. Greetings from Toronto. On your latest uh, episode of Depeche Mode Podcast, you mentioned you rarely find music that makes you feel the, like you did when you discovered Depeche Mode. Yeah, and one of the bands I talked about recently was um, oh, this, uh, uh, Gunship. I named my, my, my head just blanked was Gunship. Um, I've been listening to a bit of Ghost as of late and kind of getting into it. A little different for those that are familiar with Ghost. Um, I really enjoy the theatrics of that band quite a bit. Um, it still doesn't hold the candle to Depeche Mode, but still I wanted to mention it anyways. Uh, Rob goes on to say, though, um, he says he got to thinking of one of his recent discoveries, Empathy Test. I stumbled upon them through an interview by a YouTuber who also hosts Depeche Mode discussions, and I have been hooked ever since. He says, check out their latest release, Monsters, uh, from uh, 2020. Uh, you can probably go search most of your platforms. He shared with me, thankfully, a, um, a link to... Uh, a, uh, a, a, uh, a link to Spotify. But yeah, no, I actually dug it quite a bit. Uh, and I was really, really appreciative, Rob, uh, that you emailed to turn me on to that. because Just because of the nature of not listening to the radio anymore and spending so much time doing all the things that I mentioned before. Yeah, it just it's really difficult to discover new music. So um, I love I love being able to find stuff that's out there that's really good. Um, it's interesting too because of the ability that people have to easily make fantastic music at home. Not unlike the movie industry, I watched a film yesterday called A Shadow in the Clouds with Chloe Grace Moretz, um, which was really really enjoyable. It gets a little wonky towards the end, but it was really enjoyable. It's based off of. Uh, it's almost like watching a Twilight Zone episode uh, based uh, the time period. It was World War II, and it has this really interesting synth track to it uh, that I really uh, that I really appreciated. Um, but that film was done on an incredibly low budget, but it was really enjoyable. And so 
you know, you can make films now on a low budget that look high quality because of the way the technology has advanced. You can also make a lot of music now um, at home, and it makes it more difficult to discover bands and find a band that you can really gravitate towards. Nothing will ever hold a candle to Depeche Mode, though. I mean, it just you just can't. Uh, and it's um, it's been a comfort as of late because with everything going on in the world, I find I, I find myself gravitating back towards Depeche Mode. Uh, just because I need some, need something that I can sit down and, and really get into and provide me comfort. And Depeche Mode has always been there as a friend for me, not just in times of trouble relationship wise, but also just in life in general. Um, I've always appreciated, and I know you have too, the honesty of Depeche Mode's lyrics. And even if it's not relatable on a one to one scale with the news of the day, there is still an emotion attached to it that really, um, you know, acts like a warm blanket in in times of cold trouble. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just the Depeche Mode will always be a part of my life and has changed me as a person completely and, and for the better. All right. That wraps up the show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, support my nerd world in the Depeche Mode podcast and go and pick up uh, your copy of uh, any one of my Embark, a series available in ebook, paperback and audiobook narrated uh, by me. Uh, and if you do and you enjoy it, uh, share it with others and please leave a review on Amazon.com. Um, I really, really would appreciate it. Uh, either way, I'm glad you take the time to listen to the show. I hope you enjoyed um, listening to it as much as I did uh, recording it. And uh, I'll be back sometime in the near future. Hopefully we have some news about the band. Hopefully we get through this pandemic too and the band can get into the studio and start creating some new, uh, some new music. That would be fantastic. So thanks again for checking out the show. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye. My Nerd World.